The Clearwater River Casino is proud to bring you professional boxing back to the valley in the form of popular heavyweight explosion series sponsored by Corona Extra. I'm your ring announcer, Don Kelly. In the blue corner, from Kansas City, Missouri, with a professional record of 22 wins against four losses, with 13 KOs, please welcome Brian Scott. Scott! And his opponent, in the red corner, fighting out of Sumitra, Tennessee, with a professional record of 30 wins and only one loss, with an incredible 20 wins coming by way of knockout, please welcome Keith Knight. Knight. All right, referee Jerry Armstrong giving introductions and some of you might remember Jerry from the 1960 Rome Olympics. Was a bronze medalist there, Bob? I know he medaled. I'm not sure which one it was. Match up here. Big 40-pound weight advantage for Brian Scott. Height advantage goes to McKnight as well as the reach advantage. Scott, 28 years old, McKnight, 25. And again, the Idaho rules, three knockdown rules in effect. There is no standing eight count, and you can be saved by, you cannot be saved by the bell, except in the last round. And there is the bell for round number one. We're scheduled for 10. Brian Scott's in the white shorts, red stripe. Keith McKnight in the green with white. Don't leave your seat. McKnight's got 12 first round KOs. Brian Scott's got six. And a tough act to follow after that last fight. And you know, well, these would, look at the size of these heavyweights in there, though. If anybody could follow that act, it's McKnight and Scott. I don't see how McKnight was ever a cruiserweight at this size. He, you know, he, he fills out that 220 pounds. I mean, he's, he's. I don't see how he ever weighed 190 with that frame. And he started his pro debut June 92, weighed 192 pounds against Roy Bedwell, who he stopped in two rounds. Brian Scott, on the other hand, started his pro career 288 yeah. and came down. Oh, he hurt McKnight a little bit with that hook, I think. McKnight seemed to buckle a little bit against the ropes. See if he's got his legs under him. Both, there's some good trainers working in this deal here. We've had Chuck McGregor helping Bam Bam Scott along with a nice combination by McKnight, along with uh, Sean Gibbons against uh, Luther Burgess over there, one of the real gentlemen in boxing. Worked with some real good heavyweights in his day, along with Kerry Farr in the other corner. Nice right hand lead. Brian Scott looking very sharp here in round number one as we're about halfway gone through the round. Scott, of course, as we mentioned, our open. Shocked a lot of people in boxing and certainly uh, the Duba family by knocking out Courage Shabalala in two rounds. Was a very highly touted heavyweight that we saw many times on heavyweight explosion. Good edge to quickness in McKnight, though. He's, uh, he's shown him, so he's got some nice little step around moves and everything. He doesn't like the size of this ring too much, but he's getting it done. McKnight starting to get things rolling here. Bob, how much of a fact is the 40-pound weight advantage, though, for, well, for Scott? It, it depends on what if uh, Keith lets him lay on him or not. It could certainly be a big advantage in the fight, but, uh, oh, nice uppercut. That's what, oh, and he's oh. Oh, Scott. That's the uppercut he knocked out Tui Tua with in Houston. Right on the button. And that was a first-round knockout as well. track of the count and I'm not sure if he lost track of the count or he's just still on clear street Bob Sean Gibbons up on the ropes there, nothing you can do about it though he didn't get up sort of a delayed reaction from the crowd there Brian Scott still not understanding why he lost track of the count and what happened. And referee Jerry Armstrong explained it to him. You, you count 10, you don't get 11, you don't get 12. I think you got up at 9. A KO. And Keith McKnight's corner giving it to me and making me a believer. I was giving some 
Hey, Jason. Yes, sir. Kerry and Brian McKnight getting all over me because I was over McKnight for saying he couldn't punch enough for a heavyweight. Hey, Puts away Brian Scott Brian? here in the first round, and I've got to stand corrected. Very good punching power on the part of Keith McKnight. Dropping Brian Scott for the full 10 count. We take pick up the count here. There's six, seven, eight, nine. Armstrong couldn't be any clearer. Brian Scott really losing track of the count. Good sportsmanship on the part of Brian Scott congratulating Keith McKnight who improves to 31 wins, one loss. That's his 21th win by knockout. Brian Scott drops down to 22 and 5. Don Kelly going to give us the official time of the knockout. Your decision. KO, Keith Knight. <laughs> Keith McKnight. Keith McKnight with a big first round knockout. Make sure to let me know that he's got that punching power. We're going to find out what's next for him. As he's with Bob Spagnola, Luther Burgess, and it's Kerry. Take it away, Spag. I'm here with Team McKnight here. Sorry about the mispronunciation. Hey, listen, I, I've seen that uppercut someplace before. I believe it was down in Houston with Tui Tua. That's right. It was uh, with Tua. It was the right hand, but got got some good work out of Frankie Swindell. And was catching him with that shot, and uh, we seen it was open, so we just let it go. You know, listen, this you know, a lot of we were saying in the in the pre-fight, we talked all about this. Bam Bam Scott, same thing, Midwestern fighter. Everybody said, hey, who's he's fought? He never fought anybody. He knocks out Curry Shashabala on HBO. All of a sudden, he's somebody. Now they're talking about Keith. He's never fought anybody. So now they got to give you a due. That's right. You know, we're just taking taking it slow, moving up the ladder. And we were busy a lot there when I first turned pro. And you know, we got a lot of fights, but hey, the best is yet to come. Right. Hey, listen, I throughout my career as a manager, I've been accused of overprotecting guys but you only want to put a guy in a fight when you got the opportunity. You get some exposure, you put him in a fight, and, and then from there, then you're a genius or you're a dunce. But I got to tell you, you got Luther Burgess here. Kerry, I think it was a great move getting him involved. One of the class guys worked with good heavyweights over the years. How do you grade him tonight? Number one. Number one man. Eight. He had eight in me. Eight tonight? Eight tonight. All right. Eight tonight. They had the monitor up here for a minute. I wanted to see if there was some confusion about whether or not uh, Bam Bam Scott had beat the count, but oh, he clearly did. he, he was, didn't he beat, didn't it. beat it. it. He was he was looking to his corner yeah. and they were telling him hold on and uh, you know, but he was hurt. Yeah. I just wanna say this. I wanna thank the Lord because without him not be possible. And I wanna say hi to everybody at my mom's house and everybody in Georgia. I didn't forget about you. And we wanna thank Ced Cedric Kushner, Definitely. our promoter. Yes we do. Definitely. Hi, Cedric. Hi, Cedric. Now, hey, listen, excellent performance. It was tough coming after a fight at uh, Hampton and Rush. I mean, those guys yeah. just pulled out all the stops and uh, gave a great performance, but yeah. you pulled out all the stops yeah. in a real short period of time. We well, you know everybody was downplaying it because this guy was so much bigger than me, and, you know, I, I was a small guy. But, you know, when you got mobility and hand speed and you got a great trainer like Luther, and, you know, and I got a trainer at home, Mark Fraser, who helped me a lot, too. And with Kerry Farr, you know, like you said, the best is yet to come. No, hey, listen, I think they'll be seeing a lot more of you, and we'll be thrilled it all started here on the Heavyweight Explosion. Right. Congratulations, Keith. Thanks, Bobby. Back to you, Arnie. Oh. All right, thanks. In the blue corner, from Mobile, Alabama, with a fighting record of 11 wins, 60 feet, with nine KOs, wearing the blue and white trunks. He weighed in this evening at 250 pounds. A big Garden State welcome for Ed Donaldson, Donaldson. His opponent in the red corner from Starkville, Mississippi. A tremendous ring record of 29 wins, one defeat with 20 big knockouts. Wearing the green and white trunks. He weighed in this evening at a ready 220 pounds. Let's greet Keith McKnight. McKnight, 10 rounds. Okay, bosses, let the both of you, we're giving you instructions to the dressing room. I expect a good, clean fight. Put the bell ring, come out fighting. Touch love. Okay.
All right, as referee Eddie Johnson finishes, let me bring up a couple of things here, Harold, and your comments on him. This is the heaviest Keith McKnight has ever been in his pro career, coming in today at 220 pounds, looking somewhat soft. Ed Donaldson coming in at 250, the heaviest he's ever been. Nevertheless, 30-pound weight advantage for Donaldson, and he's going to McKnight. Let's see how well he schleps that extra weight around the ring. <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, Lonnie. Ed Donaldson is a notorious slow starter. I, I mean... Talking to him, I, I get the impression that he really doesn't ever throw a punch till the third round. And this could be dangerous with a guy like McKnight because I'm sure McKnight knows the same thing I do, and he's going to look to whack this guy out early. All right, well, on the rust uh, quotient uh, situation, Donaldson's uh, last fight and his only fight of 96 was against Michael Grant back in June. He got stopped in three rounds, so if he doesn't get started after that, three, that he's in a lot of trouble. Right here. I'm looking. If McKnight's going to knock this guy out, he's got to knock him out early. Of course, McKnight, he's in the green shorts with the white stripe. Ed Donaldson, he's in the blue with the white. You know, i, I got to put in a word for uh, the McKnight corner right now. I mean, one of the real, real great trainers in the game, the, the veteran Luther Burgess from the Crown Gym. Uh, this is his second fight with Keith McKnight. Uh, Keith did train at, up, up in Detroit at the Crown for this fight. And uh, I'll tell you, Luther adds a lot to the package. I mean, uh, he's an outstanding trainer. Started many, many years ago uh, working with Eddie Futch in Detroit. He's been around forever, you know, involved with Tommy Hearns and all the other Crown fighters. You know, nobody knows more than Luther Burgess. And I agree with you 100 percent. I had the pleasure of having having him sit in one time in Anthony Hembrick's corner and, and really getting Hembrick through a, a particularly tough fight and never really got the credit he deserved was sort of a low profile man in the Kronk gym as we're about halfway gone in round number one we're scheduled for 10 referee Eddie Johnson slaps the fighters apart Ed Donaldson former Marine. I had a little bit better luck in the Marines, I would say, though, than our friend Riddick <laughs> Bo, who retired today. And got a, and got a uh, very, very nice job at HBO. I mean, uh, I think he's going to do very good work there. He's in, a, you know, sort of an outreach program. He's going to travel around and do a lot of public relations work, and a lot of charity work, and, you know, things of that nature. You know, you, you can't you can't meet a nicer guy than Riddick Bo. I mean, he's just made for that sort of thing. And good for him for getting out at the right time. Under a minute to go in the first round, McKnight showing good movement, in spite of the fact coming in at a career high 220 pounds. He's only got one loss, and that was a knockout loss to Lyle McDowell. Not exactly a household name back in August of 94. Donaldson been stopped three times in his career by Kirk Johnson, Jimmy Thunder, and Michael Grant. A little more of a high profile losses if you will exactly three good fighters it, you know uh, I'll tell you Keith McKnight throw that right hand to the body I mean I, I will also look at Eddie Donaldson's big body you know that that big stomach and aim for that he got into some awfully nice right hands to the body Grant Jimmy Donaldson almost out of action for a year McKnight told me he was going to double that jab. So far, he hasn't doubled. It's one at a time. He said he's going to be, it was always going to be bam, bam. And, and so far, one jab. I guess that's the extra weight. of Ed Donaldson to so listen in on Donaldson's corner. And we're going to take a look at a tail of the tape, how these fighters match up. Keith McKnight coming in at six foot six, three inch height advantage over Ed Donaldson. Of course, Donaldson has that big 30 pounds over McKnight. Nice two inch reach advantage for McKnight. We'll see if he can take advantage of it, Harold, as you mentioned. And of course, Donaldson, 38 years of age to McKnight's 25. Eddie Johnson just called Eddie Mad Dog Johnson, as he's affectionately known, called timeouts at a Luther Burgess to clean up the water in Keith McKnight's corner. That's awful slippery when I leave that water in there. It really could cause a bad injury. Good call by Eddie Johnson. Not wanting any problems in that corner as we begin round number two. We're scheduled for 10. Fairly slow round 
for McKnight. As you mentioned, he had told you to be looking for the double jab, but there he seems to bring the right over the top. Now he seems to be doubling on Harold, getting a little more aggressive here, feeling. Uh, uh, I get the impression that's what Luther told him in the corner. Go to the body first and bring the right hand over the top. In other words, bring his hands down with the body shot and then whack him over the top because he's a lot taller. And, and that's what he did. You know, first we saw him jab to the body, then there another jab you just saw, and in between you saw a hook to the body, then a right hand.